Ladies and gentlemen, and all those that are watching this video, our topic today is going to be within the area of global economics or international economics, the The balance of payments. Now, the balance of payments is the relationship which a country has with the rest of the world financially. In other words, overall, is the country uh, is the country in the position of I owe you to the rest of the world? Uh, it owes more on balance um, than than other countries owe it. Or, on the other hand, is the country in the position of um, being right, a creditor, which means that overall more, more, more money and resources are owed to that country than the country itself owes others. Um, usually, the, most countries are usually are in a position of uh, falling behind, right, overall, the overall picture. Right, is that they tend to be falling behind and are in debt to others. What we're going to have a look at in this, um, in this presentation is two things. Firstly, how does the balance of payment work? Right? How do we describe, right, how do, can we actually quantify what, on one hand, the country owes to others, and on the other hand, what other people owe to that country? When I say to that country, we're talking about all the businesses right, and all the other um, exchanges of goods and services that exist between country X and the rest of the world. The second that we're going to be having a look at is given the fact, given the situation, that a country might be in debt, uh, are there things that it can actually do to manipulate its currency in such a way as to make payments easier right, and put them into a better position of being able to pay their debts, assuming that the country's priorities is to be able to pay their debts as um, to be able to pay their debts as quickly as possible. One of the reasons I'm going to mention at the outset that countries have to do this is because. If countries have got good international records on their balance of payments and loans, they can usually borrow from various funds at more advantageous terms. Um, that means that they can borrow further funds, right, they regard them as good investments, and they can often borrow at lower rates of interests. So therefore, it may well be a priority uh, for countries to have good records on their balance of payments. Yes, they might be in debt, but as long as they're paying them back at a reasonable rate, that's usually a good long-term policy. So those are the two things we're going to look at. We will now look at the first thing, which is the situation of the balance of payments. Let's look at it simply. Um, on this diagram, we've got the circular flow between firms and households. And what we've actually seen previously is that there's a relationship between the things that firms to supply to households Right? I'm um, sorry, the, the household supply to firms, like um, they supply the factors of production, land, labour, and capital, right? They also buy things from firms, the things that are produced. Remember, we're talking about the firms within this country, right? And also, firms that supply um, to households income in the form of wages, salaries, or whatever you call it, right? And also, um, they um, they also um, supply um, output to households because of the various things that um, firms produce. So that is the sort of the internal relationship, what we've looked at I mean, between the various factors of production within the macroeconomy. That's what we've looked at so far in macroeconomics. What we need to emphasise one stage further is that there are injections into the economy and one of the main injections of the economy is what's coming from foreigners. Right? The injections include exports. Now, exports, surely things are leaving the country. How can you call that an injection? It's not. Because countries don't export things for free. Countries will only export things if 
what they're getting in return is worth, uh, is worth substantially more than what they're exporting. So therefore, overall, if you are exporting, right, and you are trying to see that the national wealth accumulate, right, exports are a good thing. Right? Inflow of funds for the balance of payments. That means that the country, other things being, being the same, kept in its paribus, right, the country is ahead. At the same time, you've got imports. Now, imports means that overall, the country may be losing. Because if it has to import goods, it won't be importing them for free. It has to pay for them. And it will only be importing them as long as other countries are prepared to make a profit. So I, so I, so what is actually happening is that the funds that come from exports are injected. The, the funds that leave the country, that, that go to imports, come from out of the country. So therefore, as long as exports are greater than imports, the country is in a better position on its balance of payments. But if the country, and this typically happens in the developing world, um, is importing far more um, technological, particularly uh, secondary products, than exporting the products, what is going to happen is that the country is likely to fall further and further and further into debt. Now, what we're going to have a look at is we're going to have a look at how do we describe that situation. That is the first thing we're going to be having a look at. And we're going to have a look at one or two of the ways that we can actually say, what can be done about the situation? Or what can countries themselves do about the situation? So let's have a look at a sample set of figures. Um, and we're going to explain, before we do that, we've got to say, what is the balance of payments? Now, if you yourself have got a thing like a checking account, or whatever it is, a current account, Right, or you, you, um, you have with a bank, you will have the following. You will have um, a current account, which means that you can withdraw money at any time, right, and, um, and sometimes with an overdraft, which means the bank is prepared to let you spend more money than you've actually got. Um, and that's for your sort of day to day uh, purchases. That is called the current account. Put it here. Now, you've also got other accounts, which we're going to be having a look at. For example, your savings. Now, those are not things that you normally withdraw, but those are things that you're actually credited with in the bank. Right? Those go, that's your capital. Right? Now, you might also buy things like shares and things like that in other companies. You're not going to cash those tomorrow either, although you might get a regular income on them. That's like, more like your financial account. Now, all these things exist with the national accounting of a country, and we will quickly consider each type of account one by one. So, these are the accounts. Right? A country has a current account, that's like with you in the bank and your regular spending. A capital account, that very loosely might be comparable to your savings and other things that you may have within the bank. Your financial accounts, very, very roughly, um, very, very, very roughly corresponds to um, you buying various assets that yield money, right? Like, uh, for example, shares of a company. And then finally, you'll change your um, foreign currency reserves. Um, wait a moment, wait a moment. Um, that means that uh, something you won't have or you're unlikely, you're less likely to have. Because these are things that banks do. The national banks, especially of wealthier countries, have got huge amounts of gold and foreign currencies. And they use and these are tools which they actually use in, um, in well, amongst the reasons that they actually do is firstly backing up the currency, and then also manipulating the actual value of their currency. Something that we looked at at the previous unit Right, when we looked at exchange rates, right, various ways that the government could intervene to be able to raise and lower the exchange rates. We're going to bring this in a little bit later on in this, particular, in this presentation. Let's now have a look at the current account. The current account on the whole is the most complex. Don't worry, it's not that complex. And let's look at the sample of figures. By the way, these figures come from InThinking uh, for the IB, which is an online programme, highly recommended for IB students. 
Now, um, the way that it's actually presented is a bit like a checking account, right, over the year. What is the total position? This is like a photograph of what's been happening in Country X in the year 2019, and these figures are a photograph of what's been happening in Country X in 2020. Now, for the way that it's normally presented is that they divide exports and imports. Can you see? Exports, imports, exports, imports, and other bits and pieces, which are also exports and imports. Um, and in order to be able to work out the current account balance, which means, um, are they in debt or are they uh, indebted, which means, so, or are the other way around, that people owe them money? Do they owe? I owe you or do you owe them at the, country, at the, at the international level? Now, the way they divide, they, they actually present the figures are as follows. Goods, right? Remember, we've got goods, we've got services, and we've got incomes and transfers. We look right, these are the four things that make them up. With imports, the total value of imports in this country, and we'll focus on 2000, on this set only, right, is 2019, 234. But imports, 222. Which means that as imports exceed exports in value, right there you've got 12 million in excess in this example. So therefore, so far the country's winning. Right, it's ahead. Now when it comes to services, Services are invisible trade. You can see a good, you can't see a service, right? Um, service might be, for example, education. Here's a lump of education. You say, no, you can't. It's an invisible trade, right? It's, it's invisible. So the value in this case of export of services, right, and imports of services brings it to minus four. So so far it's running at eight ahead. In that particular case, this country probably imported more services, like banking services, for example, from Singapore, right, or um, um, agricultural technology, technology from California or Israel, or anything like that. Those are sort of these sorts of things, right? Those are exports. Uh, um, so the, that is how the import services, but the country is also quite advanced through been exporting services, but overall it imported, it bought slightly more services than it, that's like importing, than it's sold, which is exporting. So, so far we're at 12 minus 4 is 8. Now we're through, um, we've looked at goods, we've looked at services, there are other things that come into the country regularly. Firstly is income flow. Now what he's done there is he's com we've combined two figures. Because it's not, it doesn't say income flow, it's talking about net income flow. What is income flow? That is money that comes into the country and leaves the country. Because if you've got a best investments abroad and you've got shares in other countries, they pay you dividends. Right? They, right, then that means that every few months you, know, you can get payments. So that means it's coming from neither exports of goods nor from exports of services, but it's coming from payments that are made right, on investments that are made in other countries. On the other hand, what's happening is that, the, the, that this particular country is also paying out on foreign investments that are made in its own country. So that's in net. So overall, what's happening is that this country is doing quite well on other countries. It's been a good year for its investments. And net is 141 more than the amount that actually came in, than they actually left the country. So they're doing quite well. Now we come to transfer. That's a big one. Transfer payments are payments which come for no reason, oh sorry, sorry, for no economic reason, plenty of other reasons. For example, um, Filipinos work in Israel, right, and they look after, uh, and, they tend, and they tend, and they help old people. Right? A lot of Israelis working in the Philippines, but a lot of that money that they receive in Israel, they actually send back to the Philippines, and Philippines, the Philippines gets a lot of income from transfer payments, the reason being that um, most of the, the, the reason they go abroad in the first place is to be able to actually help their relatives at home. Other examples of transfer payments might be when countries make a gift, um, sorry, um, when countries um, give aid, right, although we will see in future units that can, usually tends to come with strings, but foreign aid can be seen as a transfer payment, um, at least in the short run can be arguably a transfer payment. So remember that countries uh, get money coming in. Your transfer payment can be like your pocket money that you had when you were at school. Right? Your parents give you pocket money, 
Yeah, that's it. That is a transfer payment. It's a, another word can be a remittance, right? Which means that you're not getting the, 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 yeah, the money that is coming in is not supported by a service or a good or a payment on or a payment on something. And so that is your current account. Now put all these things together: goods, services, uh, goods, services, uh, income flows from financial products and pocket money, if you want to call it, and add the whole thing up. And this turns up in this case in this country, seventy-one. So that means overall, this country has actually um, been spending, um, has, has actually had more money coming in, right, than money leaving the country. So therefore, it's got a positive balance on its current account. Now, of all the accounts that, ex that are um, in, the, in the national balance of payments, I think it's fair to say that the most complex one is the current account. And publishers are you, typically, figures are published every quarter, um, every three months, um, and of course, annually. Okay, well, we'll now do that. I mean, we're going to take the, the current account, and we're going to bring that in to looking at a broader picture of all the accounts looked uh, together. Right, we should get to make the balance of payments. Just one moment. Let's scroll up. Just, um, let's scroll up. Here we go. Right. Let's take this off. Well, actually, we're looking at the current. Let's take this off. The current account balance. Remember, we had seventy-one on the last one for two thousand and ninety. We've taken forward. There are other accounts. Capital accounts. They, the, the capital account is like you have a property in the other in somewhere else in the world, right? Um, some land that's actually um, that, um, that has value and that uh, contributes towards the GDP, um, or other assets. Another example could be a patent. Now, what happens is that money money came into your country because somebody in your country was very clever and then invented a, a new app. For example, right, that can uh, do weird and wonderful things, right, and that, and in order for the rest of the world to be able to use it, they have to be, they have to, by international law, pay. It's a patent. That is not the capital of the country, and that would appear in the capital account, right. Usually, capital accounts are relatively small um, to, um, to compare to current accounts, but they will appear in the balance of payments. Now, we now come to what is called the financial account. That's the third thing. Be very careful not to confuse the financial account with the current account because they are two very different things. Because whereas the time at the current account looks at the fruit, which is like interest payments, dividend parents, and so on, of the money tree, the capital, the, the um, financial account. Right, looks at changes in the trees that produce the, um, the um, in the money trees that produce the money fruit. Now, um, those are categorised into different ways. Right, there's direct investment and portfolio investment. Let's look at each one. A direct investment is when a country actually spent a foreign direct investment, which we're going to look at in in the future units, um, is where a country. Um, let's say, um, give an example, the United States Intel right, company wants to open a research unit uh, in, in Israel. What they then do is that they actually set up their company in Israel and they employ, and they employ top Israeli whiz kids right, who have been trained in this area to be able to do their research for them. That is an example. Now that is a foreign direct investment because what they've actually done is they've invested in the country, right, and that has actually cost them a fair amount. Now the profits that there's going to yield for them each, each, each quarter, right, each three months, they belong to the current account. But to actually open a foreign direct investment, right, or a direct investment into the country, which is to plant a money tree, which is like Intel research unit in Israel, um, or, for example, many, many other examples of when countries uh, outsource their manufacturing to China, right, because of the cost of factors of production may be a bit lower. 
Uh, and so you get countries in Western Europe and North America outsourcing um, their, uh, but the actual outsourcing, buying the, um, buying the land, buying the labor, and buy, sorry, buying the land and all those sorts of things, um, that is direct investment and that yields. And that, and, and that, is the, that is a separate account because you're buying not the fruit, which is the money, which appears on the current account, but what yields the fruit. Direct investment. That's one way. Another part of that forms the financial account is the portfolio investment. The portfolio investment is shares. People buy shares in different countries. Now, if you bought a share in a company, right, you have invested, you've made, uh, if you like, a direct investment in another country, uh, which is you've actually bought a tree. That's a share in the company. Hopefully, that will yield dividends, payments, right, or you, right, and so on. Right? People buy shares and finance businesses in other countries, right? and when they actually do it, right, and, um, and buy financial products, that is part of your portfolio. So that if you as an individual, for example, have got shares, bonds, right, and um, other financial products in other countries in the world, and the payments go to you, right, because you're the owner of these particular uh, financial products which yield money, right, then um, that is your portfolio. The actual portfolio belongs to the financial accounts, and as people buy shares and sell shares uh, day in, day out, right, they're changes in the financial accounts. Now, these are all net figures, which is the amount of money that leaves the country in the, uh, under these headings, balanced by the amount of money that comes into the country. So then we've got the following, direct investment, portfolio investment, and um, also, I'm going to do, um, a balancing item, as these things, for the whole thing, tend to be very vague, right, in order for the accounts to balance, right, and there's usually a certain amount of error in it, right, because the accounts overall should, bar um, should balance, um, that is usually put in so that they balance. Now, changing reserves of gold and foreign currency is, you have to put it, is a separate issue. Because sometimes the country has, for certain reason, pays for things in foreign currency, and other ways it sometimes receives things from, 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 uh, from foreign currency, and it's actually used to be able to settle the balance of payments. So therefore, when you take all these things together, I remember the most important thing that we tend to focus on at this level is the current account, right? Um, you end up, is the country in surplus, right, or is the country in um, is the country in surplus or is the country in deficit? And what should actually happen is that if you take all the accounts together, right, they should balance. But the thing that worries countries most, right, and is the most concern is the short term, right, the current accounts, right, because the other things, um, the other things which are balanced by assets in other countries, Right, are not what you call day-to-day -day worries. The country isn't particularly in debt. But when it comes to current accounts and it owes money on day-to-day -day goods, stuff that's actually exchanged, right, goods and services, right, countries, other things being equal, find that the deficits in current accounts are not very nice things. Uh, what we will do now is, um, this is the first part of the balance of payments presentation. We will, having presented the balance of payments, we're going to have a look at the, our next session as a sort of addendum to see how um, the balance of payments um, countries can actually manipulate their currencies in order to get ahead in solving the balance of payments. That will be the second part of our presentation. Right, so thank you very much ladies and gentlemen and uh, raising my glass metaphorically here is to the continuation of the balance of payments. Thank you very much.